Hello everyone, my name is Sam, and today I will tell you about A-B testing of mobile apps and games. Just a few words about us. A Booster is one of the leading mobile marketing companies in Russia, and we are working in the mobile industry for more than 8 years already. Our core competencies are increasing and getting installs and acquiring paid traffic, app store optimization, reputation management, and of course, A-B testing of mobile apps. Um, I don't want to bore you with a detailed story about us. I think you can find out everything you need on our website. So, let's move on. We live in an era of data-driven marketing. Far from the days when marketers and product managers made decisions based on guesswork and intuition and hoped for favorable outcomes. The modern-day product team has a scientific approach and relies on data. A-B testing is the best way to remove uncertainty and gut feeling when making marketing or design decisions for mobile apps, websites, ads, or any other digital campaigns. So, A-B testing is an online experiment conducted on a website or mobile application to test potential improvements in comparison to a control or original version. Um, put simply, it allows you to see which variation or version works better for your audience based on statistical analysis. How do app developers work on hypotheses when improving a mobile app or game? Usually some idea comes up. It can be based on experience or on market examples, or it can just come out of nowhere. After that, different solutions are selected and tested. As you probably figured out from the topic of the session, we are going to talk in detail about this very stage today. Well, only after testing, the feature is developed according to the chosen solution and then implemented in the main build of the app. In the end, the app becomes better. Let's say, of course, that is a schematic representation of the product process, but it will help us to better understand the importance of testing product hypotheses. When we say an application has become better, we expect its metrics to reflect this. Here is an example of a product's unit economics where the implementation of a new feature changed only one of the metrics, conversion from the install to a trial subscription. If we look at the very beginning of the project's development, this metric was 10%, and during this period, the project's profitability was negative, very sad. After this metric has improved by 5%, the application immediately began to bring profit. And when it improved by another 5%, the profitability of the application increased more than three times. Thus, by implementing the new features and influencing product metrics, you can directly influence project economics. Now, let's go back to the testing phase of the solution. When you are ready to test several variants of the new feature implementation, you have two choices how to present it to your audience. The first option is to release the feature immediately and update the main build of the app. You make new screens, modify the code, etc., and then publish the new build to the App Store. After that, all you have to do is wait. You wait for the audience to interact with the new feature, collect the data, and then interpret it. The second option is an A-B test. You will need the A-B testing service and install its SDK to your app and possibly set up additional integrations. However, these efforts will eventually bring significant benefits compared to a traditional update. First, the speed of the test. When you do an update, it takes a very long time to collect data on the variants being tested. In order for the audience to interact with each of the variants, you will need to republish the app to the store after each update. It can take many months to gather enough users for each option. With an A-B test, you can collect the right number of users in parallel for each option and you'll get the necessary data faster as a result. As for the additional labor involved in implementing the SDK, you should remember that it is done only once. Secondly, in case of an update, you always have a high probability of inconsistent traffic. For example, in one month you use some sources of traffic and in another month others. Maybe you have changed the set of partners if you work with some agencies and advertising networks. With A-B tests, this negative effect will occur much less 
due to the reduced duration of the test. Third, there is a heterogeneity caused by external factors, such as seasonality. For example, if you attract traffic in December and then in January, you are actually working with two different behavioral audiences. Um, how classic A-B tests are conducted and what concepts do we need to understand? First of all, we have to determine the number of variants that we need to test. Here we have three variants in this example. Then we take the required sample, it is the number of users who will participate in the test and on the basis of their behavior we will look at the conversion into the event or target action we need. The conversion rate here is the conversion rate in each variant if we were sure that there is no random factor in the results. Confidence interval, it is the conversion rate at a specified level of significance, by default 95%. This means the conversion rate is among the values of the confidence interval with a probability of 95%. And confidence is a measure of the certainty that the result is correct, says that the test results are correct with a specified probability. As you can see on the example, Variant C turned out to be the best. It is better than variant B and variant A. This means that the sample size and the difference in conversions are sufficient to accept them as statistically significant. We can trust the result of the conducted tests with a given 95% confidence. What hypotheses are there if we are talking about product development? In general, there are two directions. The first direction is, do you need to implement anything at all? Let's assume you have everything working fine, you have your user activation final setup, and everything is okay, and you think, for example, hmm, if I implement a mini game in my application, my retention rates may drop, or may level up. But then you recall that some of your competitors have told on the conference not long ago that they implemented such a mini game and their retention rates went up. So we have some concerns about whether or not to implement the feature. The second variant of hypothesis, when you know for sure that the feature is needed, but can decide between the variants of implementation. The simplest example, what color to make the button, red or blue? Or a more common example in games, the arrangement of an in-app of in purchases in the store, in columns or in rows, and in both cases, you have to do the test, and we'll go into more detail on that. Um, so, as you remember, you need real users or traffic to perform a test. How should you distribute traffic during an A-B test? In a classical test, the audience is manually distributed across variants. For example, we have four options being tested, each of them will get 25% of the audience. An alternative option, which can be implemented using some services for A-B testing, a dynamic distribution of traffic between variants according to a special algorithm. One of the most effective algorithms used for this is Thompson sampling for multi-armed bandits. With dynamic traffic allocation, the distribution can change depending on the performance of the element being tested. As shown on the picture, at the beginning of the test the traffic was divided equally, but soon variant A showed a high conversion rate, so the traffic distribution was adjusted accordingly. It is a simple concept. Dynamic traffic allocation can modify the distribution of traffic based on the first results observed during the test period. A multi-armed bandit algorithm progressively redirects users towards the variation that works best. Um, remember we talked about what kind of hypotheses are usually tested? Depending on the type of hypothesis, you need to choose an appropriate testing method. When you don't know if you need to implement a feature, you choose a classic A-B test with manual distribution. For example, 90% of users keep seeing the current version and only 10% get the new feature. This is done so as not to worsen the metrics drastically if something goes wrong. In case you have the second variant of the hypothesis, uh, 
you know for sure that the feature is needed, but you have several variants of implementation, the best way to test is to dynamically distribute traffic by algorithm. This will allow you to effectively make a test and most of the audience will immediately have access to the option that will give you more conversions, purchases, registrations, etc. Um, what to do next? You have some results, but you still need to take into account the reliability of these results. If you have a dynamic distribution, you need to aim at 95% reliability of the results. Statistics says that achieving 100% reliability is mathematically impossible. It is absolutely necessary to monitor advertising campaigns that are used to attract traffic. What kind of sources are used? What kind of creatives? Are there any misleading advertising approaches, motivated traffic or fraud? And the third factor we've already mentioned when we compared updates and A-B testing is seasonality. Remember that you shouldn't compare audiences that came in before and after the new year, for example. Um, now let's talk a bit about the mechanics. What you need to do to run an A-B test regardless of the service you use. First, you need to load all the features you want to test into the application itself. Unlike A-B tests of websites, for example, where you can implement a separate version of a page with new features, you can do this with mobile apps. It's necessary to integrate all the new features into the app itself. Next, you need to install the SDK, which will distribute the audience and show one or another option to the user. After that, we can start the traffic. In classic A-B tests, we will use new users, but in some cases, we can use the old audience. And then we have to wait until the necessary sample is accumulated and we get statistically reliable results. Now I'd like to say a few words about the Proba service, which was developed by App Booster. Uh, this is the user's personal interface. Our service allows you to perform both classic A-B tests and tests with Thompson algorithm distribution. Uh, on this screenshot, you can see the statistics on the previously conducted experiments with different variants of a paywall, as I can see. Uh, the, winning, the winning variant is highlighted in color. Thanks to the integration with the Apps Flyer, you can also see the results divided by traffic sources. Uh, the Probe service provides you all the needed functionality to perform A-B tests. It includes an SDK, which is responsible for distributing traffic between different variants. At the moment, all popular mobile development platforms and cross-platform frameworks such as Unity, React Native, Flutter, iOS and Android are supported. And the size of the SDK is very small and the installation has almost no effect on the size and performance of your application. Uh, then the platform and the personal interface for the user to run tests and get results, as we have seen before. And also, you will need integrations with analytics and mobile attribution systems. Currently, integrations with Amplitude and AppsFlyer are available. Support for other popular services will be implemented in the near future. Our team is working on this right now. So, embrace the experimentation mindset. Remember that by basing your strategy on data and A-B tests, you'll be agile, but most importantly, you'll have guaranteed feedback on what works and what doesn't. You'll be better at making sound business decisions and investing time and money in what your users actually want. Thank you, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them right now or reach me by the contacts you see on the screen. Bye-bye.